Well, it's uh, a bit difficult to say how it all started because it's never one event or uh, it's always a lot of things. Um, there are two things how it all started. One is um, cryptocurrency. I was always very, very interested in cryptocurrency and I was uh, working with McKinsey and I was doing their very traditional and very big sector uh, banking and insurance. So Bitcoin somehow popped up and we were discussing it. And um, if I'm very honest, I did not believe in cryptocurrency. I did not believe in uh, all this concept of digital currency, anonymous transactions and so on. But I still was following Bitcoin and uh, it got more and more successful and it got more and more interesting. So in 2013, beginning of 2014, I was thinking about cryptocurrency. But uh, I was also thinking a bit how to bring cryptocurrency to the next level, actually. Bitcoin has um, a lot of good things. It is the pioneer. Without Bitcoin, without their blockchain, without the idea, we all will not be here. But they have several things. One is um, Bitcoin is not a coin for everyone. It is, um, has its own usages and uh, it is the right coin for some people but not for everyone. For example, a lot of people are attracted uh, who are more speculators because the price goes up and down quite a lot. Uh, a lot of people who do more um, transactions are um, interested, but transactions meaning like a money transfer. So I send from India money to Germany and a lot of people in the IT sector do this. And the third, I would say, big party who is interested in this was uh, people who are interested for reasons in anonymous transactions. So as much as we all have some need for privacy, and we all do because the, the world gets more and more transparent, we also need to stick to some rules, unfortunately, or fortunately we don't know because there have been so many things happening in the last years after Bitcoin creation, like terrorism and uh, you know drugs and all these things that are difficult to manage. One of the very successful things that Bitcoin was involved in was this Silk Road uh, merchant um, platform like eBay, where you could buy things that you cannot buy legally. Uh, it was closed and eventually. So Bitcoin had very, very interesting ideas, but it was not a mass market cryptocurrency. And I thought if you simplify cryptocurrency so that everybody understands it, it could actually become something like... Um, Something like Facebook, something like Uber. Uber is also a very interesting company, which is controversial. You know, they change the way we, we live, the way we use transportation. And this is changing the world of payments and of finance. So cryptocurrency, yes, was very, very clear to me. Uh, I think end of 2013, maybe beginning of 2014. And then I was thinking how to bring this to the masses. When I started... Thinking about cryptocurrency, my contacts were more institutional banking clients, big private equity funds, so people who definitely could get excited about cryptocurrency. For example, Goldman Sachs are also excited about the blockchain and so on, and they can invest in it. But unfortunately, these people do not have um, real contacts out there, retail people, like people like you and me. So the idea was how to bring a good concept, an interesting concept, out to the people. And um, there I have a personal friend, his name is Sebastian Greenwood, who has been active in network marketing for quite a while. He was the one actually who suggested, let's do network marketing. And I said, no, let's not. Because <laughs> exactly when we wanted to start this company, another company, which was quite big, that went bankrupt and a lot of people had lost money and it was all over the press, the internet, and it was just a lot of bad vibes in the industry. So when we started, and he convinced me that network marketing might be exactly the right thing. So we said, let's do network marketing, but um, let's not sell the cryptocurrency. Let's do an education package. There's definitely a lot of need for education, especially also in developing markets in, uh, on finance, personal finance. And uh, a lot of people who want to be successful, but somehow still do not know why and how to do this. So what we did is we created the education packages and we attached to them the free mining rights. And we said, okay, if you do the education package, if you're interested in cryptocurrency, do it. Even today, not all of our people mine the coin. Some of them just do the education package. Mm -hmm. And um, this is actually how it all started. 
But when it all started, I remember one of our first events was in Finland, because people got very excited about this, actually. Um, I don't know how often I had to explain what is cryptocurrency, what is Bitcoin. And this was actually how it all started, end of 2014. I would say 2015 was the year where we all learned about what is cryptocurrency, what is mining, how does it actually work, so really the basics. 2016 got a bit more sophisticated, a new blockchain, new technology, and now 2017 and 2018, the next two very, very big steps are coming up, the merchants and the coin going public. If you go to websites like CoinMarket or whatever, you will see that there are a lot of cryptocurrency out there. Nobody can say how many actually. It can be 400 or 500, we just don't know. So um, in my opinion, however, there are maybe three or four really big ones who are trying to be um, big, who are trying to find a niche and who are trying to do some work. Bitcoin for sure is one of the big ones. It is the most liquid cryptocurrency out there. Most people who speak about cryptocurrency trade this coin or do things with this coin. Still, the transaction value is very, very low. So if you look at it, it's probably 3 to 4% of the coins who get transacted per day. And a lot of these transactions are internal transactions. It means I put from my account to another of mine account, just for safety reasons, coins. We have Litecoin. Litecoin is a big coin, it is probably the number two out there, but um, nobody actually uses it, even not in transactions. So uh, what happens is I see new coins coming mainly from the IT sector, popping up, and most of these coins are done because somebody finds out something interesting in the code. So they code something where you can do something on the blockchain or new usages of the blockchain. Ethereum, for example, it's actually not a real cryptocurrency. What they try to do is they try to provide a blockchain where other people can use. So um, I think there's still no coin out there which is targeting the mass market. And I believe this is the case because the community of cryptocurrency is a bit arrogant. Yeah? So um, they are for sure very knowledgeable people, very smart guys, uh, most of them with very heavy IT background. A lot of them also believing in this um, theory of, um, I would not call communism, but we should give something to the public, we should share it all and then see what happens. Nothing bad with this, but um, if you put something out there and uh, give it for absolutely free to the people, you have no money to invest in infrastructure, you have no money to invest in a brand, and you somehow have to trust it that it will move in the right direction. So for sure they cannot invest in events like we do, they cannot invest in education, they cannot invest in uh, a strategy. So I think what is unique about 1.1 is we target the mass market. So we try to make the cryptocurrency as simple as we can, we try to link it to education, and uh, we try just to be accessible for everyone. Make the mining very simple, make the usage very simple. The second thing that I believe we are unique is that we are very global. So we always try to create a currency that is present on all continents. It is not an easy task because sometimes it is much easier to be on one continent. For example, Europe, where people are very sophisticated, where they understand this, or China, where people also like a lot of digital currencies. But still, we believed from the beginning, if we want to be the future of payments, if we want to do transactions, we have to be also in Africa, we have to be in India, we have to be in Latin America. So this is very, very important for us. And the third thing that I believe is very, very important is um, we are one of the few cryptocurrencies that focus on usage. And I don't mean usage of the blockchain like others, like Ethereum, but I mean usage by people. Because cryptocurrency itself has no real value. It is just an algorithm, it is just a digital number that you have. Unless you put something behind. Something can be a brand, but something can be also the usability. What we want to do with OneCoin is we would like to be the first choice for merchants. We want to create something like PayPal, saying it very, very simply, but in the cryptocurrency world. 
And we all know how simple PayPal goes. You just press a button and you send from A to B uh, money. For the merchant, it's quite expensive, but it's very simple. You know, you join a big network and you just uh, can take money in from all over the world. I can send money to Australia today if I decide to, and it's very, very simple. So for us, this is also why we did the changes on the blockchain. We decided to make it a very fast blockchain, so um, it runs every minute. In average, this means that every 30 seconds your transaction gets approved because you do not, you know, you join like uh, within the block running. And it is as fast as Visa and MasterCard do transactions. I believe that this is also something very, very unique. I have not seen any cryptocurrency focusing the strategy on merchants. Most of them are speculator currencies and whenever you have high volatility, it means the price going up and down very, very quickly and... Um, uh, fast, it is bad for you as a merchant. Why? Because you want to take the money that you want. You want to sell a service for 100 euro. So you would like tomorrow to have the 100 euro too and not to have 90 euro, 110. Of course, you're happy if you have the 110, but it can go both ways. So as a merchant, you want to be sure you will receive what you advertised as a price. And this happens only if the cryptocurrency does not move too fast and too much. I believe that the network should do nothing else than communicating this because, um, you know, I'm just making money, I'm just making commission. It can never be just the, the reason why somebody should join a network. Then you can go, you can sell soap, you can sell whatever is out there. I don't know, beds and things like this. Um, I think understanding cryptocurrency is actually the key and this is something that I wish for on the events to happen more. I have been unfortunately to some events myself where I was listening for an hour and I had no idea what this company does. So um, the unique thing about us is education and then if somebody wishes the cryptocurrency. Of course cryptocurrency can change the world and I believe it will. The question is will it be tomorrow, will it be in a year, or in two years or in three it is unstoppable. It already started. The interesting thing about cryptocurrency is it is so global that it is very difficult even to stop it. So much better than trying to stop cryptocurrency, in my opinion, is to regulate cryptocurrency. Just to regulate cryptocurrency as part of the financial landscape. We are not banks, for sure not. But to make some rules for people out there, because today everybody can go and create a cryptocurrency and start collecting money. This is not the way it should be. So what we, for example, do is we already started doing KYC procedures, things that you normally do for opening a bank account. Or if you're a merchant and you want to join us, you still have to provide us with some documents so we know what do you sell, what is happening, why is money being transferred. We don't have to, but we do this. So um, this is one thing with the merchants. It's a lot of freedom of business. For example, for the European market, if you're a small, innovative Swedish company, what can you do? You can develop some cool software, you can do things. Most of us are in the digital network, they are doing interesting things. And then you want to sell it to other markets. It can be Asia, it can be India, it can be everywhere. But China and India are very difficult to sell things to. They do not have the free capital flows that we have. So you might find a Chinese buyer but it's difficult for you to get a payment. And it's very frustrating because you're a small company, you focus on software, you do not focus on international payments. If you're a big company, you can do this, but you don't have the know-how. Now here, cryptocurrency can help you because one coin is very strong in China and is very strong, for example, in Europe. So what you can do is you can put your software in our shop that is starting now in uh, next year, you can put up the price, whatever the price is that you would like, and then a transaction between a Chinese buyer and a European buyer can happen like this. Within one minute, the transfer is done. So this is something very exciting. For me, this is a bit more freedom of doing business. And the second thing, as you say, is the unbanked. Now, the unbanked, I don't know if you had a look what happened in India. India is a cash economy, so a lot of the poorer people who do not have a bank account for several reasons. Poor people normally do not trust banks. Poor people hoard the money for emergency. 
Within four days, uh, they told them that they need to come and uh, just give the cash that they have only up into a limit and they needed to exchange it and the other cash was just void. Now, this is a disaster and this disaster will not hit the rich people. It will hit like very, very small people who have their savings. Cryptocurrency can make a change. Now, you ask me, if a person is so poor, he doesn't have a bank account, how will he deal with cryptocurrency? A lot of people have access to phones. So if you manage to link cryptocurrency to a phone, and of course it's already linked to the internet, you can give these people so many more options how to bank with us. So a cryptocurrency provides just another corridor how they can make money movements and how can they join the financial system. But we have to be very, very clear on this. This is probably the most complex part of um, what we're doing. The merchants, I believe, is quite simple to put together. Then you have to grow the merchant network. You have to be attractive, low cost opportunity, fast, reliable, fine. But the remittances, you always need a point where cash gets collected. And this is the second part of the strategy, which will come <clears throat> most probably only after we open the coin for everyone. You need to make sure that there are points where you can make the virtual currency real. So where cash can come in that people have, they can send somewhere and then they can get the cash and go to the supermarket and spend it. It can work, for example, if you um, get several partners to join. It can be a phone company because you go and pay your phone bill or you can just charge on your phone bill, the cryptocurrency and back. It can be a big gas station chain, for example. It can even be a supermarket chain. Like if it's a big chain, they can take cash in for you, they can give cash out. For example, in Germany, a lot of supermarkets started giving cash out with your card. So the same can be done for cryptocurrency. You just need to find a lot of points and a lot of partners, again, a network, where they support the idea of cryptocurrency. And to be honest, I believe that this will happen because um, banks currently have a monopoly on many things and they do not treat some of their clients in a good way. So I believe that the second system, a financial system, will be created and somehow will happen. How fast, I cannot tell you, but um, there's always this tipping point theory. Things start, grow, 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 at one point of time, they just reach a point where it just gets inevitable and just like goes out. On the One Life Network, some of their main concerns is, um, is this a Ponzi scheme? And when you have a digital product that you cannot touch, like an education package, of course people are more skeptical. So um, I respect everybody who has questions or who criticizes uh, or just wants to talk to us, but what I do not like is when people do not do their homework and do not check what is going on. Now a Ponzi scheme, we all know what it is, a Ponzi scheme means that new money feeds old money. So we had this Bernie Madoff scandal somewhere, like the guy was taking investments from the public, uh, promising huge returns and then paying out the returns, not because he was a smart investor, but because he had, uh, you know, taken new money in and it's one point of time it stopped. When you join the One Life Network, what happens? First of all, we have never made any return um, promises. Why? Because we are selling the education package. It's up to you if you mine the coin or not. What will happen to the cryptocurrency? We do not know. And this is a very, very clear statement. Cryptocurrency is one of the most risky asset classes out there. Nobody knows what will happen. It can go through the roof, but it also can like not go through the roof. So both is possible. But what is important when you speak about a Ponzi scheme is, first of all, we give people the opportunity to make money without paying for a position. Every week I have between 300 and 500 people in the network, sometimes even more, who have a non-paid position, a rookie position, and who make commission on them. These people also can earn tokens to go and join the mining. So, um, of course, it's not a Ponzi scheme if I let you work for free and make you make, let you make money making for free. I'm paying you, you don't pay me. One. And the second point, which is very important, as I said, is fresh money feeding old money. Now, why and how am I obliged as a One Life Network to pay you? I'm obliged to pay you only a commission when you earn it. And you earn the commission only by uh, making a sale. 
So only if you go and you sell a package, I am obliged to pay you. So I do not need to get somebody in my network to meet my obligation. If you all stop selling tomorrow, I don't have any obligations anymore to anyone on paying commission because there's no sales event coming up. And this is very, very important. Whoever is interested, but unfortunately a lot of our critics are not interested in this, can check out also the legal opinions that we have. We have a Swedish legal opinion, we have an English legal opinion, we have a German legal opinion, Italian I think also. All of these uh, jurisdictions are quite strict and have very clear rules. And all of this are saying we are not a Ponzi. Now, one thing that I would like again to make sure in the network I believe that we as a company are very clear on what we do and what we don't. But sometimes some people get overexcited and say things that are simply not correct. So I again would like to ask all of our distributors to take education extremely serious. Educate the people that go out there, educate the downline and the distributors so that the information that we provide to new people is correct. Because I believe our company and our product is exciting enough, we don't need to be selling so hard and saying things that are not correct. If you present the project in the right way, and if you present the stages that we go through, if your people are encouraged to go through the education, it is much easier for all of us. Because we then understand one coin as a cryptocurrency needs to go through stages. It is uh, for sure not uh, get rich in 90 days thing. And I really do not want people to market this like this. Sometimes, you know, all this, how we're portrayed by the media is our own fault. A lot of things that the media write is distributor X said that. And even if distributor X said something wrong, I cannot attack this and I cannot get a lawyer to go against this because he really said this. And this is very frustrating also for us as a company. So again, guys, try and... Um, get the right information, educate your downlines and just make sure that uh, we do the right things out there. So um, we had two very exciting years. Uh, we were growing very fast, we were doing very, very good things. We did some adjustments too as a company on the blockchain, things that we just um, did not know before when we started, for example, the blockchain and the merchants. Now, the best I think is yet to come and uh, the most exciting part is coming now because now we have to move from just mining the coin into usability of the coin. And the first uh, thing how you can use the coin is moving on with the merchants. Um, 2017, January, February, we launched our own merchant platform. So what does this mean? As a merchant, you can join the platform for free and you can sell your services or your products, whatever you have, you can sell it uh, in this platform. You have access to over 12 million people there because we have about 3 million paid accounts and about 9 million free accounts in the system. So this is a lot of people. And the good thing about these people is the paid accounts, these are people who have for sure money and who are interested in buying things online. So um, you can join as a merchant for free. And for example, I don't know, if you have a flower shop, you can say, okay, this is a voucher for my flower shop. It is worth 100 euro. You can come any day and join me. Groupon, for example, does things like this. However, they force the merchant to do a 50% discount on whatever they sell so that they are attractive and the fees that the merchant pays are very high. So in the end of the day, they're only 20% maybe staying with the merchant. What we want to do is, if you're a merchant, you get access to our client base, you can offer your services, you can offer uh, your products. However, we want you to take 25% of whatever the price is in coins. Of course, a lot of our network will get excited. Some of them have small businesses. Some of them already are exciting merchants about this. So um, these people can join the network of stores, the network of uh, people and so on. So um, 
We will also incentivize the members to bring in um, merchants. The liquidity of the coin currently is still low. So this means that you cannot liquidate all of your coins tomorrow before going public. This is why we will give the merchants the option to take up to 75% of the price in cash. If you're a merchant, if you want 100% in coins, you can. Yeah, But if you just want 25% in coins, you also can. However, what we will do as a company, we will pay a BV uh, value on the cash payments. Why do we do this? Because first of all, the more good merchants we get, the better for the coin value. And uh, of course, we want this coin to be very, very successful and to get good merchants. We said, I think in Bangkok, we said 10 million users, 1 million merchants, and hopefully one day 25 euro for the coin value. But I do not want to have 1 million bad merchants. I want to have, even if it's just 100,000 merchants, but really good merchants where people get excited to use them. And I believe that in incentivizing our distributors who attract merchants for the network on the volume that the merchant makes is the right thing to do. Because it's so easy for me to sign up. I can sign up today 100 people, 100 merchants. If their products are too expensive, not attractive, bad quality, no point. So it's again, we trust each other as a network. We want the best for the network. And this is how we want to grow as a network. And of course, it's very nice for you as a merchant, you know, you put the one coin sign on your door, I accept one coin. People maybe come and ask you, what is one coin? I want to know more about it. Then the merchant can go and say, okay, this is an education package. If you want, please have a look. And um, again, the network wins from this. So 2017, to get back to your question, for me, is the year of the merchants. Why 2018 is then the year where the coin has to go public. <laughs>